You know what, actually, forget everything I said, do it this way, it's worth the bald bottom. Hi everyone, it's Tash and welcome to another recipe video. And today we are making sweet red bean ice lollies. I thought that I was being so clever making these because I wanted to model it on my favourite Hong Kong drink, ice red bean. Just sort of like a drink and a dessert. You've got sweet red beans and then you've got coconut milk. In some cases you have condensed milk and evaporated milk instead of coconut milk. In some cases both but I grew up with the coconut kind. So I wanted to make sweet red bean ice lollies that were dunked in a white chocolate coconut ganache. You know, to sort of modernise it a bit. Because obviously, when you put white chocolate in the freezer, it freezes solid. When you put cream, or in this case, coconut cream in the freezer, it freezes solid. So obviously, when you put the two together to make a white chocolate and coconut cream ganache, you put it in the freezer, and it freezes soft. Ganache doesn't set in the freezer and it's taken me all of these years of baking and recipe development to find out because no one really puts ganache in the freezer for actual recipes they put ganache in the freezer to freeze it so there isn't much information about there telling you not to do it for this particular thing because it doesn't actually freeze solid and if anyone more science minded than me can actually explain why two things that freeze solid when mixed together don't freeze solid, please tell me because I am very confused and very frustrated. So if you want to make this recipe you can just make the red bean ice lolly part of it, that part works beautifully. Or if you want to you can add a little bit of coconut milk to the red bean soup itself and add a pinch more sugar in. Or you can just dip your red bean ice lollies in melted white chocolate that hasn't been mixed with anything to make a ganache. Me, however, I placed all of my chips on this recipe, so you are going to see the semi-fail version. But I hope you get the general idea. They look the same as they would have if you just dip them in normal white chocolate until I try to lift them from the tray and the ganache gets stuck to the tray. But the rest of the ganache coats it anyway, so it still makes a very tasty frozen dessert. Now this recipe will take you a while to make, but don't worry, it's super simple because most of the time you're slow cooking the red beans, you're not even having to babysit them. If you don't have a slow cooker or a rice cooker, you can cook the beans on the stove, you'll just need a couple of extra hours being able to get up and stir and check it every so often. But it's much more hands off with a rice cooker or slow cooker. And of course the other period of time you have to wait is when you're waiting for the icicles to freeze. Icicles rather. And you'll notice I cracked and I bought magnum moulds. I know, I said I wouldn't, I was too tempted, they were super cheap when I found them. But you don't have to use magnum shaped moulds for this, you can just use those isolate moulds where you fill them from the top and then stick the popsicle sticks through the top. Doesn't matter what shape you make these, as long as you have some sort of isolate mould. So having said all that, let's go to the kitchen and see how it's done. Or not done, in this case too. We're going to start with the star of our show, our red beans. And we've got, oh, apparently we have some seagulls. And we have 150 grams of dry red beans here. I just love the feel of these. And we're going to completely cover them with some water. Let's poke these escapees down. And we're going to cover it with some cling film and let it soak overnight. This isn't optional. Well, it is, but if you don't do it, then it's going to take you forever to kick your beans. So give them a nice little soak overnight and they're going to expand and get quite big. It's the next day and we're going to rinse our beans. As you can see, they have swollen up a bit. And we're actually going to cheat a bit and cook these in a rice cooker. So you can do this in a slow cooker or in a rice cooker. I'm going to fill it up with water. So I've got enough water in here that's sort of twice the height of the beans and we're going to slow cook this for two hours. This is what my cooker looks like. I select slow cook. For two hours, close the lid and start and I'll see you in two hours. If you don't have a slow cooker, then you'll need to do this bit manually and boil it on the stove. But this saves a little bit of time and also some effort. It has been two hours, so let us peer into the murky depths of our bean stew. Looking good. Now we're going to transfer all of this into a saucepan. We're going to continue our journey on the hob. 
Now I've got this all in the saucepan and I'm going to cook it for probably about an hour while it reduces down slowly over a medium heat and I'm also going to add 80 grams of caster sugar. I might actually end up adding a full 100 grams so I'll update the caption above if that is the case but start small. This is the kind of thing that you make to your own taste so I personally don't like my red bean soup too sweet so I've started with 80 of course as it reduces down the volume will get lower and it gets sweeter so no point in it tasting it just yet. Let's give it a little stir to help it on its way. And we're going to bring this to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer and then cook it stirring every so often until we've reduced it down to a thick but still soupy consistency. Just to add, some people after they finish the initial cooking of the beans before they transfer it to the pot, they actually drain out that cooking water and then add fresh water to it and some people say that reduces the bitterness. I don't actually find that. I actually prefer it with the cooking water and it gives more of a rich flavour. And I actually find that red bean soup and red bean paste made after you've rinsed the cooking water, the beans the first time I added fresh water, does taste a bit watered down. So this is my preferred way of doing it and I find that cooking water provides extra richness to the beans because it still has a lot of the starch in there. So bear that in mind. Again, depends on your tastes. We have some bubbly beans, so it's only been about 15 minutes. We'll just give it a little bit of a stir and then let it carry on. It has been just over an hour and this is exactly the kind of thick, chunky soup that we want. So um, give it a taste. If you want to add extra sugar, then feel free to, but this is enough for me. Now this is quite hot, we've taken it off the heat, so we're going to let it cool down completely before we do anything else. And it will thicken a little bit as well as it cools down. Now here I have a silicon ice lolly mould, and yes I did break, I did get a magnum mould. You can use one of those, you know, the top down ice lolly ones, but I quite like the shape of these. These ones you can slot wooden lolly sticks into there. These ones actually came with the holes closed so I had to punch them through myself, but it wasn't that hard to do and I just got them from Amazon. And I'm simply going to spoon this to the tops of each mould. And I think it should make for, I actually do have an extra mould just in case. But we will see. Aha, so we still actually will need our second mould. And now we're going to push through our lolly sticks. Now we're going to give these a tap. And I can fit a little more bean in there. We don't want them to be too shallow. And I'm just going to fill these moulds here and do the same. Excellent, so that made six in total, and mine also came with a handy lid, so I'm going to put the lids on too, to help keep them not so messy in the freezer, especially when the freezer frosts over, you know, all the frost gets onto the tops. And these are quite good because they kind of stick by themselves. And now we're going to freeze these overnight. To make our coconut white chocolate ganache dip, we're going to take 300 grams of white chocolate and set it over a double boiler. Make sure that that water doesn't touch the bottom of a heatproof bowl. And we're going to add 160 millilitres of coconut cream. This happens to be the whole can for me. And we're going to let this melt together. And once everything's well combined, we're going to take it off the heat and leave this to cool to room temperature. Now it's time to get dipping. This is actually still a little bit warm, so I am cheating a bit. As you can see, I've put it in a tall container and we are going to unmold our popsicles. I'm starting with the small one because it's quite hot today and we have to work fast. This is super exciting. Just like this, Ooh, lovely. And I've lined my tray with some foil, which I'm going to put here. And we're going to dip this straight in. 
Give it a wiggle, give it a jiggle. Bring it straight up and give it a good shake. Give it a shake down too. And that is one lovely coated red bean icicle. Right, let's do the rest. I've just popped them all back in the freezer now, so they'll chill in there for about half an hour just to make sure the outside is nice and set. And we do have a little bit of leftover coconut white chocolate ganache. I'm just going to pop this in the fridge. This will set up a little bit and then you can, uh, you can roll it in grated coconut and have some very soft set truffles. Or you can just, you know, remelt it again and spoon it over some ice cream. Delicious! So, as you can see, these looked amazing. I've already taken a bite out of that one so you can see inside. But uh, look at what happens when we try to lift them from the foil. Yep, turns out ganache does not freeze. Which is weird because chocolate freezes and cream slash coconut cream freezes. But you put them all together, they don't freeze. So uh, this is how they'll turn out if you use ganache. And I'm just going to bring it outside because it looks a little bit nicer out here for the thumbnails and my pictures. So here you go. As you can see, gorgeous. Nothing really wrong with it visually until you go like that <laughs> and you can see it hasn't stuck to the bottom because all that ganache stuck to the tray. So yeah, you could still use the ganache method. It'll still be tasty. It'll just be balled on the bottom. And this is just to show you what it looks like when I froze them overnight. So actually the ganache did set a bit more, but it was still quite sticky. And to be honest, after five minutes, it went really sticky again. And you'd have to wait for a couple of minutes for the ice oil to soften a bit to bite into anyway, otherwise the whole thing would be quite hard. Anyway, I did end up doing a slow-mo cut just to show you that texture after a couple of minutes out of the freezer. Still very nice. So if I turn it around this way, she's gorgeous. If I turn it around that way, yeah. And actually tried this just now with a little bit of dark chocolate, a little bit of double cream, in case it was the coconut, in case it was the white chocolate. And it did set a little bit more solidly, I have to say, but still not actually solid. So it still would have had the same problem. So like I said, if you're okay with there not being anything on the bottom because it will get stuck to the tray, then do it this way. If not, then just dip it in straight melted white chocolate, or you can add the coconut milk to the red bean soup itself and add a bit more sugar to bring the sweetness levels up and just not dip it in anything. Cheers! You know what, actually forget everything I said, do it this way, it's worth the bald bottom. That is so nice, the soft texture of that ganache goes so well with the beans inside. I'm actually really happy with that. Oh no, I'm going to have to re-edit the intro a bit so you know this is actually still a good way to do it. Granted, not the most visual appealing, but wow, it tastes good. Yeah, go ahead. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's recipe video and I hope you'll join me next Wednesday for my next one. Get the full written recipe on my blog tashcakes.com, follow me on Instagram, I'm tashcakes.tastes, and find me on TikTok too, I'm tashcakes there too, but my handle is food in slow motion. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to see more. Give this video a like if you liked it to help other people find it. Comment down below if you'd like me to make anything in particular and I'll see you guys next time. Be good. Be nice and have a good week. Bald bottoms.